smoky pineapple. Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm gonna do a re-review of the Ben Romick Peach Smoke uh, Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. But before I get into this, here are my notes. The Ben Romick Peach Smoke is made from 100% malted barley, peated at 47 parts per million. It is aged in first fill bourbon cast, vintage 2008, bottled in 2017. Bottled at 46% alcohol by volume, no added coloring, and if you can find it, sells for anywhere between $53 and $88 in the United States. All right, so I reviewed this whiskey I want to share my photos from my visit to the distillery, but it's been about a year when I get back into it for several different reasons. Number one, context. Uh, it's one thing to you know, review a pita whiskey or a sherry whiskey or a bourbon or Japanese whiskey on its own and outside the context of doing a series of similar other whiskeys. So in this context, I'm sort of looking at it in the, um, alongside having just reviewed other pita whiskeys and I'll be reviewing more Highland pita whiskeys. So it's, the context is different. Also, if you are consuming a lot of pita whiskeys, you can sort of become saturated with the peat so that the peat doesn't seem as intense as it did before. So if you're going peated whiskey after peated whiskey after peated whiskey, uh, it's not you necessarily get burnt out or fatigued. It's just that you become desensitized to the peat. It doesn't seem as strong as it did before. Particularly if you're doing all at once, or, you know, like a flight of peated whiskeys. You know, as you keep going into them, the peat seems to get less and less and less. So it's good to sort of tr test them, review them in different contexts. The other thing is, uh, I wanted to test this in the context of Highland peat after Highland peat, and not just um, say Isla versus a Highland. So, and, and then the third thing is, how well is this whiskey doing now that it's been open for over a year? Got it right down to about there. You know, is it still good? One of the most common questions people ask about whiskeys is, does it go bad? And a lot of others have done videos on that. Short answer to that is, once you get past about halfway down, you're probably best off uh, putting into smaller bottles. Number two, it depends on how often you open the cork. You know, if you're constantly pulling the cork and pouring little samples, yeah, you're gonna get a little lot more overly oxidized in that case, but if you get it down to about here, put a cork in it and don't open it again, it's gonna be fine. Also, keep it out of light. So that's my short answer to that question. But let's get into it, all right? So the first thing I notice is the smoke and the peat is really interwoven. I remember when I reviewed it uh, the first time, when I first opened it from the neck pour, it was super ashy. Now the fruit is really shining really, really, really well. What you get up front is pineapple in terms of fruit. Very, very, very tropical. Maybe some pears and apples, but the smoke is interwoven really, really, really well. I'm actually, I gotta say, I think I'm liking it more than I did before. The vanilla pops. That first fill cask, get a lot more vanilla extraction out of the cask. Got a lot, sort of like a, 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 a vanilla cream going on in there. There is a hint of saltiness. The character of the smoke is a little bit more on the ashy side. You get some pears, some apples, a little bit of lemon, so it's got some citrus as well on the palate. Mm. It's a little sweeter than what I remember. It's got a nice medium weight to it. It's sort of creamy mouthfeel to it. This smoke is really interwoven really, really well. If you ever do barbecue, you have a luau or, or you're on a shish kebab and you put meat and you put vegetables and you put pineapple on it, do a Hawaiian style. And that pineapple on the shish kebab doing a Hawaiian barbecue sort of gets that grilled character to it. That's exactly what you get here. But it's got this real nice creamy vanilla cream going on there as well. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Delicious whiskey, very fresh, very juicy. The fruit character seems, I would say like a canned fruit, but also grilled. So it's got the juiciness and extra sweetness of a canned fruit, canned pineapple, but um, it's got that, it's got that smoking grill uh, uh, this, uh, factor going on there. Now, 
I really, really liked it. I gave it 90 points in my previous video. I'm in that same ballpark, 88 and 90 points in that ballpark in terms of numbers on it. How is the whiskey doing now that it's been open for over a year? It's tasting excellent. It's doing really, really well. Doesn't seem like it's been open too long. It's not getting oxidized. Uh, a whiskey that ha has become overly oxidized, right? Um, it'll start to become flat. Fruit flavors characteristics will seem flat. Wines, red wines, uh, when they become oxidized, they, they sort of have a uh, rusty nail character to it. White wines will seem quite a kind of stale to it. Bourbons will have a staleness to it. I've only had uh, overly oxidized whiskeys. I've been uh, probably a couple of different bourbons, and it wasn't until they got down to about here. So, if you've opened a bottle of whiskey and you're worried about it going bad, you're fine. You're fine. Just don't put it someplace that's too warm, and don't keep pulling out the cork just for shits and giggles, right? You'll only pull it out when you're actually going to pour yourself a, a healthy dram. When you get down to about halfway point, maybe it's a good time to get together with some friends or pour it into some smaller bottles if you're really, really worried about it. All right. So it's doing just fine, having been open for this long. This is a really nice whiskey. I really, really like it. Challenge is there are a lot of adipated whiskeys out there on the market, more readily available, uh, that are gonna be in the same uh, price point that I'm gonna like more. That would be the only thing to it. Uh, it's a first fill bourbon cask. You know, there's some that might have some sherry notes to it or that might have more than just a tropical character to it. I think, of course, I'm a big Ardbeg fan. Uh, I like the briny notes to a, a peated whiskey. And now having tried this in the context of a whole a long flight of um, uh, Highland peated whiskeys, I like it, but there's some other Highland peated whiskeys that I like more. So eventually, after I finish the series, I will probably do a top five, top five of my favorite Highland Peated whiskeys, uh, but that won't be coming up until I finish this series later on here in uh, 2021. All right, if you can get a, a bottle of this and you can get it for under 70 bucks, what I'd say, pull the trigger, sure, sure. Uh, any more than that, I would say no. Now, one of the things Ben Romick is doing is they are changing their labels. I've seen a different label on the um, uh, Ben Romick 10. I have not seen it on the peat smoke. I like the old fancy writing here, but they're going for something a little more um, trendy in terms of the way the other distilleries are also labeling uh, their whiskeys, but uh, the juice seems to be uh, the, the, the same in, in their bottles. They're just changing labels. Anyway, all right, if you like watching my videos and you've not yet subscribed, I ask that you subscribe, ring the bell to be notified. When I go live or post another video, and if you are one of my patrons, I wanna thank you very much for supporting the channel. And until next time, cheers.